Now let us discuss how to answer the question numbers 5, 6 and 7. It is clearly given in the question paper itself that you should answer in one or two sentences. Isn't it? That means these three questions are of short answer type. Now you do one thing. Definitely you answer it in two sentences because it is a two mark question. And when you write the answer, first of all, you have to notice the tense of the question. See, always the answer should tally with the tense of the question. Suppose if the question starts with the did, it means that the tense of the question is past. So definitely you should also answer in symbol past. And other thing you have to be careful regarding the question word. What is the question word used in the question? For example, if there is why, why indicates reasons, isn't it? So if there is why, you have to write the reason and you have to use the proper conjunction that state reason. For example, you have to use conjunctions like because or since, as, so, and like that. So according to the question, you have to write the answer. And see, here the mark is not entirely for the correctness of your fact in the answer. But mostly what people see, how correctly you have expressed the answer. In the sense, you have to express it in proper tense and other thing, you have to use proper conjunctions. Another thing, you have to use proper conventions of writing. In the sense, you have to begin with a capital letter. Other thing, you have to use wherever commas or full stops are necessary. These are things are very important. Okay. Now, see, when you write this answer, don't search the answer directly in the passage. You won't get the answer directly in the passage. See, in this, you will have two kinds of questions. One is open-end question, another close-end question. Open-end question means you will have a number of answers for that particular question. For example, what do you feel? What do you feel? Means, see, you can have different feelings and so you can have different answers. So, the only closed end question, that will have a particular answer. Other ways, you can have different answers according to your understanding. And that all depends on the way you write and express your answer. Okay. So be very careful because altogether here these three questions carry six marks. Okay. So read the textbook properly and when you answer, read the passage properly and find out the proper answer according to the question. The most important thing most important thing is understand the question properly before you write the answer. Okay. Now, let us go to the next section that is the grammar and vocabulary. In grammar and vocabulary part, the first five questions that is question number 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. These questions are in the correction of 
errors. You will be given a passage from the test book and most probably the correction of errors passage this this too is most probably from the A reading. Of course you can expect it from B reading or C reading but mostly the more chance is from A reading. So read the A readings properly. Now you know in this correction of errors they would have marked every sentence with a number or the question number from 13 to 17 and each sentence has an error you have to identify the error and thereafter in your answer sheet you have to write the entire passage again after rectifying the error now the question is how to identify the error in the sentence see mostly here it is very clear already it is said that there is only one error that means only one word in the sentence is wrong okay now every sentence as a function in a sentence now every word as a function in a sentence or we call it as the parts of speech a sentence as a number of words and different words have different parts of speech for example there are nouns, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, verbs, prepositions, conjunctions and interjections. Okay. Now, how can we identify the wrong word? See, just what you have to do, you have to see what is the parts of speech of every word and if the word justify or if the word is used properly according to its parts of uh, speech then it is right if there is any mistakes regarding the use of words according to the parts of speech then it is wrong you can identify it easily or what i say see in the passage check if all the nouns are used properly thereafter go if all the pronouns are used properly, then the verbs are used properly. Then when you check this noun, pronoun and verb, there you have to see whether its subject verb agreement is proper. Singular noun, singular verb. Then you have to also check whether the verb is used in the right form according to the tense of the passage. Thereafter, check the adjectives and adverbs then the prepositions, then the conjunctions. If you go through these parts of speech, definitely you can identify the mistake or the error in the sentence. Now, another thing that you have to take care, of, it is regarding the conventions of writing. One another thing where there would be mistake in the passage. Conventions of writing means using of proper capital letters then the commas apostrophes full stops question marks okay sometimes there would be mistake regarding the use of uh, proper conventions of uh, writing so if you go through this definitely you can identify what is the error in a sentence and i would like to remind you once more see after identifying the errors you have to write the entire passage properly and duly you have to mark the question numbers as well as you have to underline the corrected part then only you will get a mark and this bit is very important because one word one mark if you commit mistake you are losing one mark just for a single word so be careful when you answer this bit now 
let us go to the next part see now we have finished up to question number 70 now the next bit it is question number 18 19 20 21 and 22 see it's a fill in the blanks options would be given on the top of the passage itself and you have to identify the right option and write it it is very easy and they are half mark questions and see every even every half mark is also important but see this is from your textbook itself so if you read the textbook properly you can identify what is the right word you have to pick it up and uh, you have to write here there is no option okay you have to write the particular you have to put proper question number and you have to write the particular answer okay and the next bit that is question number 23 to 27 okay you have to do as a director here see behind every reading there is glossary so the first thing the one mark definitely there would be two questions of half mark one regarding synonyms and antonyms that depends on the glossary or the word meanings of your textbook another thing again there would be the right form of the words replaced with the right one these all again depends on parts of a speech sometimes the prepositions would be wrong or sometimes the verb words would be used in a wrong way or it is not the suitable parts of speech so those things you have to change so all together here in these two sections that is section a and section b we cover 25 marks 15 marks in section a and 10 marks in section b okay so today what you have to do is you have to go through unit 1 and unit 2 properly and read all the readings properly then try to answer the questions that we provide here and one important thing see i would like to give you some important phrases or sentences from the textbook and you have to definitely understand the sense meaning as well as context of these sentences or phrases from the textbook okay Hope all of you will practice these two, uni two units properly and all the best. Thank you.